part of our live webinar today. My name, as usual, is Sri. I'm representing Phil Futures. With us today, we have uh, Rachel and uh, Wong Kon Hao, your keynote speaker for today, walking you through on the technical analysis on trading the micro e-mini futures part two. If you have attended part one, I'm very thankful for the wonderful reviews from our audience as well as uh, feedback on the webinar. Uh, thank you so much for the support and you know we heard you and we had to bring you part two following all the wonderful feedback. And uh, with us today is uh, Ms. Rachel Wong. She's the representative of uh, CME Group. If you have questions that are product related, uh, feel free to shoot them in the question box at any point in time of the webinar. So, and we will address your questions either halfway through the webinar when we have a break or right at the end, uh, we'll have our Q&A session. Meanwhile, uh, without further ado, um, can I just do a sound check? Can everybody hear me loud and clear? I could hear you. Could you hear me? Uh, loud and clear, Kon Hao. Yeah, that's good. All right. Uh, thank you for your interest and looking forward to part two, Mr. Azizul. Um, really, really appreciate the feedback. And Li Huat Ko, thank you for saying that you can hear us loud and clear. All right, with the, without further ado, let me hand the reins over to our keynote speaker, Kon Hao. Over to you. All right, uh, I think first of all, I want to thank you, Sri, and uh, also thank you, Philip Futures and CME Group for inviting me back again to share on this topic. Uh, it is really my honor to represent CME Group for this presentation tonight. So before I get into my delivery, uh, the important slides, here comes next, the disclaimer. All right, so uh, what I will be presenting is purely on education purpose, and it is not a recommendation for you to buy or sell. So I, my hope is to help you to be more equipped as an investor or a trader. So in any case, if after this program that you are inspired to try out the methods that I will be sharing in a short while, uh, that is a good thing. So it is your own responsibility for any investment or trading decision that you may be going to make. And that decision, it is not from me uh, or not from Waypedia. It is not from Philip Futures or from CME Group. So if we have a common understanding, uh, we got to get moving. So in part one, we discuss about how to identify market reversals, uh, identifying those with good weighting. Now, it was a very well uh, received that the organizer would like me to take you deeper in today's into part two. So my motivation in today's uh, program is to guide you to write through a trend after identifying a reversal with an entry. Now, how to write through a trend. So now, instead of getting in and out of a trade, uh, one of the best way to grow our trading fund is to learn how to write through a given trend when it is available to us. So if you have not attended the part one, I have uploaded, um, this is part two I, would, I will be sharing, that I've uploaded the webinar on this link below, you could see here. Now, I would suggest that you can revise it uh, as and when you're free. And I received many good questions during the Q&A during the part one. So I managed to reply a few during the webinar and the rest of the Q&A I have archived it. So please read it uh, when you are available. Now, so I'm just gonna go through the um, some summary of what I'm gonna cover tonight. Um, the first part, I was, I'm just going to give you a foundation, a quick recap of what I've covered during part one, because it is important. Uh, it may be some repeat if those are tuning in, but you just take it as a revision. But I'm going to go really quick on the part one, because you need to, to have certain foundation before I move into how to manage. Uh, in part one, I we, we basically talk about identifying market reversal. But today, I think I just want to talk about how to manage once after you saw a market reversal, how to write through a trend. So I'm going to be quite quick with this. If you find that uh, you got lost in between, uh, do go back to the link that I've uploaded the uh, part one 
webinar. I'll take your time to go through it. And the key tonight will be on this second part that I'll be sharing. Uh, this will be second part. I will go to go a bit slow. And then after that, um, I'm always not satisfied if I can't show you some case study on how we apply what we study to work. So I'm going to uh, give you a case study here. And it's always a delight to receive a question. I hope that uh, you can uh, ask me as many questions as you like. In fact, while in presenting the topic tonight, uh, you could start post your question. Uh, just figure out how to do that. You can start to post your question and Street will maybe selectively uh, choose a few. And from my last experience was that after that, they will email me the whole list of questions. I will still reply them anyway. And Street Philip Futures is going to send it to all of you guys. All right, I think uh, it's also good that I just introduce uh, very briefly about myself. Um, I studied engineering but never practiced on that field after I graduated. Now I started and worked as a floor trader and has been in this industry. And I think I always will be in this industry, but that was for the last 24 years. So over the years, I have developed a strong interest in forensic studies of the market prices and behavior. Now this has really given me and some advantage in managing my own personal fund for the last seven years. Now, apart from sharing about tactical investment and trading techniques with various partners and institutions, my interest on behavioral science also leads me to work and participate in litigation process, helping the buyer or seller to resolve market arbitration or trading dispute. Right, um, just gotta get moving. And in today's market, I'm just very thankful that we have all these micro e-mini futures. Why I say that? Because if you are, are going to bring back to time about 15 or 20 years or more when it got started, this game, this game, this trading game, when you're going to trade indices, is only available to the big boys. And if you're a starter, you have a passion to trade, it is not available. Why? Because the contract size or the notional value is so huge. So allow me to just take about maybe five, 10 minutes to go through what is uh, uh, micro e-mini, um, CME group micro e-mini? Because if you're going to trade uh, uh, the short term or, or mid term, you, you first you have to understand how the product, the mechanism of the product. Uh, once you understand the product, then things will get a bit easier. Now, uh, before that, how, how do I choose a product that is, uh, or, or rather, how do I qualify a product that is tradable? Uh, in fact, uh, during the daytime, I trade throughout the Asia. And nighttime, I may trade the US market provided I'm available, I'm free at night. Now, uh, there's two criteria. I, I would choose a product that I qualified then is tradable. Number, number one is that it must have a liquidity. And number two, it must have certain volatility that I like. Now, um, like this slide, uh, in fact, Micro E-mini was launched just in May, uh, but it's already became the most successful product for CME itself, okay? now. Uh, when you trade index, you have to understand that you're trading literally a basket of stocks. When I say I'm trading the micro e-mini S&P 500, it means that you're literally investing or trading a group of 500 companies. So these are just a showcase of the top 20. Okay. Like I said, I'm just going to move very fast during the first segment. Now, uh, just to showcase, the um, since the first trade, Date in May, micro e-mini futures have been the most successful product launch in CME Group history. Now we have seen about 58 million contracts traded, or equivalent to about 9 billion, 9 billion US dollars in notional value or contract value just in the third quarter alone. Now, so uh, there are new and returning customers continue to turn to micro e-mini futures to help to manage the risk period of market uncertainty and add more precision. To their trading strategy. Now, the last part will be interesting here is that uh, for investor, uh, you could use micro e-mini futures to hedge as well. Uh, it's not just for if you're holding some ETF, uh, but maybe maybe even U.S. stocks. If you're holding some U.S. stocks, you could consider to use micro e-mini futures to hedge. Now, I wouldn't be discussing about hedging tonight. Maybe the next time we'll talk about it. Now. Um, just to understand the product, you have to understand what are you trading, what are you investing in. Say, for example, if you see an opportunity tonight in the micro e-mini S&P 500, and you may want to buy, you may want to do an intraday or maybe hold a position trade for just about two or three days. Uh, say you have decided to buy 3,000 3, points 
and for every good reason, which I'm going to describe to you how it works later. Now, so what does it mean when you buy at 3,000 in micro e-mini S&P 500? It means this. Now, first, you have to understand the contract specification, the minimum movement for micro e-mini S&P 500. It states there that every 25, uh, 0 0.25 points is equivalent to $1.25 US dollars. Now, this is uh, P3 mats or maybe P4 mat. Now, if, if I'm just going to shift the decimal to one, now it means that it times four. Now, it means that one full point is five US dollars. So now what does it mean if you see that there's a reason to buy at 3,000 points? It means that you take 3,000, times five US dollars is equivalent to 15,000 US dollars. Notional value or contract value, they're referring to the same thing. And it means at this point, if you purchase at 3,000 point, that you're having a view, maybe just hold for about two or three days, you have this short-term view. It means they are buying a basket of 500 US stocks worth $15,000. Yes, I know there's margin, but uh, I, I trade a bit differently. Uh, I engage in margin, but I always ask myself that I want to have a certain mindfulness. How much am I buying? What is the, 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 the exposure that I'm exposed to? Say, for example, I'm not satisfied with 15,000. I, I feel that I'm more confident this time around. I, I may want to trade 10 lots, 10 micro e-mini S&P, which which is 10 times 15,000 US dollars is $150,000 worth of exposure for the next two or three days if I want to hold a position for the next two or three days. This is, that's it, okay? It's always a mindfulness of the contract value and margin in my consideration, I always put that aside, but it's the mindfulness of what are the exposure I'm exposing to. I think that's really bring out the essence of uh, futures trading or leverage trading. I just want to showcase you, and um, this slide I prepared about last month, but today the value is still about the same. If you trade the micro e-mini S&P at 27,000, uh, just now I do the working with you, it means that you're buying a basket of uh, uh, um, um, uh, 30 stocks, was it 50? 50 stocks worth 13,500. Now, if you're going to buy at 3,000, which I explained, which means you're buying a basket of 500 stocks, worth 15,000. And there's also micro e-mini NASDAQ 100. 100 represents 100 tech stocks. At 7,008, it represents 15,600. And the last round when doing part one, I, I did not discuss about micro e-mini Russell, but I met one of the participants in person. He said that he, he explored into a micro e-mini Russell 2000 and he really enjoys it. So remember, whatever you trade is always there's a value to it. Uh, there's a price and there's a value to it. So I'm just, um, uh, this will be my last slide on uh, how to understand the micro e-mini. So it's always about, it's very important, the mindfulness about what are you carrying? What, what is the exposure that you're exposing yourself within the day or overnight or over a period? Now, um, again, the fundamental before I move on to the key topic tonight about how to engage a reversal up strategy in a, 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 a trendy market. Now, I'm just going to bring you through very quickly what we've covered during the part one. Okay, let me just check my time, make sure I'm on, uh, on the right timing. Now, um, when I look at technical analysis, now as a trader, um, it's very important how do I function is that it depends a lot on technical analysis, which is chart. Now, because without a chart, I'm uh, personally, I'm blind. I, I could not function. I, I can't trade. Or maybe I could invest, but I can't really trade uh, short term or, or having a position because I need to understand the, the market dynamic through studying the chart. Now, let me explain to you how I function reading off the chart. Now, when I look at a chart, um, I'm going to say that when I look at a chart, I'm, I'm not just looking at just to chart the price alone. When I look at a price, I'm looking at the behavior science of the human behavior. Now, uh, I always look at chart as a behavior science. Or what is behavior science? Behavior science means that market psychology. Now, behavior science provides an explanation for why people make irrational financial decision. And how do I pick the turnaround or market reversal? Uh, the key is I always look for an extreme. Whether, whether there's an extreme buy-up where it represents quite a bit of fear or an extreme sell-down where it represents 
uh, uh, earlier was green, all right? And when there's an extreme sell down, it will represent uh, much green. Now, it could be happen in the daily chart, weekly chart, but today we're just going to talk about the 15 minutes period. Yeah. So uh, you may say that, does it apply in any other time frame? Yes, it does. It's just that you have to uh, profile yourself, who you are. And what we explained tonight is applied throughout all markets. Um, it may not be just be in the US market, it apply in, even in, in the com commodities market and forex market, it apply throughout all markets and all time frame. That you may ask me, why is it so? Very simple. It's very simple to understand because I got to ask you this, who traded a market? Now, your answer will be us. And who are we? Well, we, we, have, we have teachers, we have lawyers, we have doctors, we have unemployed people that's trading the market. We have brokers that may be trading secretly on the market as well. Now, so now I may ask you, when, they, when we trade the market, what do we have? We have emotion. Now, the next slide, uh, how I explain about trading the, the market or how to look at chart or technical analysis, how do I define that, is when we look at the market, which is live right now, say for example, what are we looking at? We're looking into the past behavior. Towards my left, this is what I'm interpreting, that I'm interpreting that the human behavior, we, I'm always analyzing into our human greed, fear, and confidence. Now, confidence, this word is very interesting. It may also apply to insiders trading as well, okay? Now, um, let's go to the uh, practical part. I just give you a uh, understanding about how to define what is technical analysis, okay? We're analyzing what? We're analyzing the human behavior of greed, fear, and confidence. Now, this is a long-term chart, S&P 500, is a monthly chart. Now, how it works here is this. Now, uh, that was 2008, 2009. We understand that there was a Lehman crisis and there's a lot of fear, okay? Now, and shortly later, QE1 was introduced and we saw that there was a, a lot of confidence getting in. Now, I want to notice on the gradient is pretty steep when there's fear. And when there's confidence, I still remember that at a point in time when there's QE1 being announced and market uh, confidence is just not, uh, 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 largely, it's not just confident, but you could see that the gradient is about 45 degree. And that, to me, it kind of represents confidence in the market. Now, as we move along, we could see that uh, there was a period when Donald Trump won the election. Between these two years, 2016, 17, and 18, you could see the gradient is really steep. Now, this I would classify as greed. Greed, yeah. So now, um, what am I doing today? Uh, I have my own investment portfolio. I have my own trading portfolio. I manage both of them and I break down the four parts. But tonight, uh, my topic is not about trading profiling or investing profiling. I'm not going to talk about that. Now, because of the greed that was happening the last, uh, between 2016 to 18, now I'm mindful that it's pretty greedy. Now, notice that after this move, the market has been very much volatile. Now, if you could follow my cursor, it was very much volatile. Now, volatile, it means that there is a lot of trading opportunity. Now, because this is a monthly chart, when I decode that the, the whole monthly chart, there's a, we, we could experience an area of greed. Now, what am I doing with my investment portfolio right now? Now, it, it was because of this greed. I have cut down and reduced my investment exposure much. That doesn't mean that I do not have investment portfolio. I still have, but because of this greed, my investment portfolio or my exposure have reduced much. But because of the volatility, uh, I have increased my uh, quantum or my trading for portfolio. It means that I place more margin with the broker and expecting more volatility to come ahead. So as for investment, I'm not too keen moving forward to be too heavy on it, but I would rather focus more on trading activities because earlier I say that there's two criteria that uh, it qualified me to trade, which is, if you still can remember, number one is volatility and number two is liquidity. Now, first, the market, it will offer a lot of volatility moving forward. I think you should agree with me. And liquidity, then we have to choose the right contract for us to dabble uh, the market with. Right, uh, again, it's just a recap of what we are going through the last round in part one. Uh, I'm just gonna be very quick on this. Now, uh, many of us are very familiar with Hammer. 
uh, but I'm not satisfied. The part one we we discuss about we have to understand the psychology of a form, formation of a hammer. Why? Because a lot of uh, uh, the participant or the people using the hammer, candlestick hammer, what they do is that they literally follow as a structure. When there's hammer, means that I could buy. But I'm going to bring you a little bit deeper in part one is that we have to understand the psychology behind the hammer formation. So I explained that the hammer have to be formed after a bear market, something like this. Now, so imagine this is a daily chart where there's a lot of daily bars. And this one five day, say for example, today it was a bear market for the longest time. And this day open unchanged. And somehow because of all the negative news in the past, the market slammed all the way down. Okay, especially now when to, how to pick the reversal day that carry waiting, which I explained part one is that it, because of all the negative news in the past, and one five day when it opened, say for example today, the market is still very negative and it depressed much. Now, especially the day that the daily range is absolutely high compared to the normal average, the normal average. Now, these days will draw a lot of interest because there's a lot of emotion tied to it. There's a lot of fear. Just imagine just follow my cursor that during the day it slash it slammed down all the way because of a lot of fear. And for no good reason or no good positive news. The market towards the close, it went all the way up and closed, say, around the high. Now, so this hammer or this formation, it became very precious to me. Always think about the emotion behind a structure or whatever book that we have read. Don't just take it literally as a structure you follow blindly, but we have to understand the psychology behind it. Now, let me just repeat for the last time that it's a negative news. It went all the way down and for no good positive news, available news, the market somehow recover all the way up and close around the high. Now, this became an alert for me that perhaps it is time to look at it and buy into the market. Okay. Now, so of course, the expectation is after this is formed. Now, after, only after this is formed, I am interested to get into a position. Okay. Now, uh, I just want to clarify that uh, to identify reversal, it is not catching a falling knife. A lot of people uh, uh, commented that, Konhao, Kon are you trying to catch a falling knife? No, I'm not trying to catch a falling ni knife. Let me explain why. Now, catching a falling, falling, fall, falling knife, it is on the way down, you try to put a bit. You hope that this may be the low, maybe some of you may be using Fibonacci and that's the wrong way to use Fibonacci. Okay, Fibonacci is not a support or resistance. Okay, it is not. Now, you may, on the way down, you say, oh, maybe this at 3,000 is good. I, I'm going to place at 3,000. So you, you let it fall and break below your support and that is not the right way to do. Now, why I say it is not catching a falling knife because we let the low establish and it close significantly higher within the day or within the period whatever time frame that you're using. Now, we let the low establish. It pull up and close very strongly, especially when there's no positive news. I got to ask myself why the market closed so strongly, despite a very bearish sentiment throughout the day, throughout the week. And there must be a reason. There must be a reason. There must be maybe the syndicates or someone know something that we do not know. Okay. Now, so I'm not catching the falling knife. Why I say so? Because I let the low establish first. Okay, it makes sense. Then the next, maybe the bar and onwards, I'll be quite keen to establish a position. And looking back, my belief for this structure is that I do not believe, or I believe that the low has been established for a good reason. Therefore, I make a purchase around here, not believing that or, or the chances of breaking this low is pretty pretty low. The chances of breaking this low, all-time low, is pretty low because why? Because as I look back to the left, I believe that the low has been established. So as you trade, whether is it for long-term or invest for long-term, for long-term, I look at the monthly chart or, or weekly chart, daily chart, you must always have this understanding that uh, always look back to the left. Uh, has the low been established if you want to buy? Or if you want to sell short, you got to ask yourself, looking at the left, have the high being established for whatever good reason. You always have to establish that fact. Then you will have a lot of confidence in picking 
market reversal or doing market entry. So that was a part one, and I, I'm going really quick on this. So if you can just go to this link here and do your revision. Okay, so it's about less than an hour. It was really fun. Uh, I'm gonna move on. Okay, now so after that, um, I I I I gave uh, quite a few example into uh, um, the micro e mini Dow Jones, the micro e mini S and P, and the micro e mini Nasdaq. Okay, so I just gonna very quickly run through. And this is what we have discussed. And notice that uh, this bar, you could see a very clearly defined hammer. Now, so I discussed about uh, how to identify those hammer that carries weighting, a very good weighting or high probability compared to other hammer. Because if you could look across, there are many hammer, but this hammer is different from the rest. Now, we discussed about what was the average range of this 15 minutes if you're analyzing from the 15 minutes chart. Now, the typical range for the uh, 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 15 minute range was about 22 points, you could see that. But on this hammer, it was quite spectacular. Now, you could see that the whole day range from the high to the low, and I'm not, not gonna dis dis discuss about the psychology of the hammer, which I briefly touched on it. Now you could see the whole day range, it represents 51 points. Now these, it means that there's a lot of activity within this 15 minutes period. It opened unchanged, it went all the way down, and then after that, for no good reason, it went all the way up. With no good published reason, it went all the way up. So it speaks something to me where I believe that maybe the low has been established, so therefore I, I take a chance with a measured risk is important because once you trade, we're not doing investment, there's leverage, always define where's the measured risk. Now, if you believe that the low has been established, you want to make a position here, just at the neckline here, you want to create a new position, then since you believe that the low has been established, so therefore my belief is that in uh, the next few periods, as I hope that the trend will move up, it should not break below this low, okay? So you may consider to put a stop loss below this low, okay? So we've discussed about, um, on, during part one, I, 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 I bring an understanding how to identify a market reversal, then I give a case study, and I ask you guys to spot for the potential um, uh, hammer that carries weighting. So I think most of you score it correctly. And at a point in time, we have a lot of time, so I, I, I went through very slow, but today I'm just gonna be very quick. So these are the four points that we've identified within the last uh, one and a half weeks, okay? One and a half weeks period. You could see after the low being created, there was a uh, up move. After the low being created, there was an up move. After the low created, there was a little up move, but it's good enough. Uh, it's about, you, you, you're gonna hold a position for a day or two. You will gather uh, for 15 minutes chart, uh, usually my profit target is about between about 12 to 20 points okay you will still get your target so this is for down jones and for this one obviously you got stop loss but i, I just want to be uh, uh very realistic in trading so sometimes we do encounter some stop loss that is fine so next one uh we move into smp uh micro e mini smp 500 um so on the same period we also spotted four but smp 500 is better than Dow Jones. Now you could see that uh, um, we now we we first we we identified those hammer that carry weighting. Okay. Then after that we all recognize that we are pretty right and the market have a little range here for us to take profit. After this low, a little range here for us to take profit. After this low, there's a little range here for us to take profit. And after this, a spectacular hammer, a market traded sideways didn't break this low and after that market trend. So today we're gonna to study about how to uh, identify um, trend, okay? How to identify trend and how to write through a trend because um, I always uh, hope that as a trader, you don't just go to uh, uh, getting in and out, but if you get it, you got it in correctly with the right trend, you also try to write through the trend because this is how we can really uh, grow our fund. Okay, our trading fund. So the next one, next example will be NASDAQ 100. Um, so we just go through the example. And, and this one, I think I'll just skip it. Uh, if not, you'll become too monotonous. And I just want to go straight to tonight's topic, okay? About getting into reversal up. Getting into reversal up strategies. Um, how to do that? Now, how to do that? Now, this is 
going to be interesting. I hope that it's going to bless you. Um, uh, I just put things in structure. I mean, over the last seven years, as I become a full-time trader, I already knew that, but if not, because I've given a role to present, I will not put my thought in proper, proper structure. So um, it's only the last few months I put it up in this good structure so that all of us could uh, see and understand. Okay, for now, I'm going to talk at my normal speed. I'm going to be go going slow on this. So allow me to just have a drink. Okay, now, um, reversal up. Reversal up means that uh, we look for hammer. And of course, reversal down, we look for shooting star. Okay, now, uh, I just want to focus on reversal up because the rest will be just uh, reverse in your thoughts. Now, reversal up means that you look for hammer. And during part one, we have identified uh, how to identify those hammer that carries good weighting. That means we're not casual with our entry. We are very serious, but make sure that the one that we enter, it, it carries weighting and it's worth taking a risk. It's worth taking a risk because we want to be very serious. It's our hard earned money and uh, I'm more focused on, more excited to see my account grow uh, from week to week, month by month. Okay, So this is how we're going to do that is this. Now, uh, if you're going to go for reversal up, I just have to take it as you have already have this skill to pick reversal up. Okay, now. What I'm going to do is that you have to identify the trend and how to pick the reversal up is that, of course, it got to be uptrend. Now, uh, let me give you an understanding here. Now, in the uptrend, uh, I'm going to go slow on this. What are the characteristics of an uptrend? Now, I want to take a few seconds to look at this typical uptrend. It's very typical. Okay? Now, in the uptrend, you could see that um, the up move or this up move, okay? The length, the magnitude is much longer than the retracement, okay? So that is the huge characteristic of an uptrend. So if you want to pick reversal up, you want to apply reversal up strategy or the hammer strategy, first you must identify is there uptrend, Okay. Now, if there's no uptrend, later I'm going to offer you another strategy. It's fine. You still could apply the hammer or the reversal up strategy. Now, in the uptrend, the characteristic is that the up move, the magnitude is much larger, is much longer than the retracement. Okay. Now, so how should we plan for a trade when uptrend is being established? Okay. Now, now, when there's an uptrend, when there's uptrend, that means uh, it, it's very clearly stated that now the market is uptrend. Like, for example, if you look at the monthly chart, the weekly chart, and uh, weekly chart in the US market, it is still an uptrend. So, if I were to invest in the US market still, I will just look out for an opportunity or I will continue to look out for a buying opportunity because the US market on the monthly chart, weekly chart is still uptrend. I do not want to go against the trend. Now, so similarly, if you're looking at a 15 minutes chart in the micro e-mini S&P or micro e-mini NASDAQ, first, first thing first, as a trader, you have to understand you've got to build up the skill of where is the trend right now. If the market is an uptrend for whatever reason, later going to offer you some uh, uh, method to identify uh, the trend. Now, is that first of all, you have to identify where, the, where is the trend right now. If you can convincingly tell yourself that the, the trend is up, now what you should do as a trader, maybe you're looking at 15 minutes chart, you should be positioning yourself to look out for a buying opportunity because the market is an uptrend. Now as a trader, I'm, I'm not casual because uh, if the market offer me that currently is an uptrend, I will just focus on one thing. I would just focus, I, I want to channel all my energy, my resources, my time to look for the best buying opportunity. I, I'm a bit different from other traders that, that, that's very active. I don't just buy and sell and having uh, uh, one moment I'm buying, the next moment I'm selling because I realize that I'll, I'll confuse myself because the whole objective about trading is that I want to grow my trading fund. I want to be serious about it. Now, if the market offer me that currently is an uptrend, I just want to do one thing. 
I want to focus all my resources to look for the best buying opportunity coming up. Now, so next, so what is your trading plan? The trading plan is this. Now, since it's an uptrend, I just going to wait for the best buying opportunity. So therefore, I will consider to wait for a retracement. Okay, I will wait for a retracement. I may not trade every day. Yeah, but if the best opportunity comes because there was an uptrend, number one, and number two, there was a retracement. And with the retracement, it comes with a very nice reversal up pattern or hammer that carries strong weighting. As of that low, the next period, the 15 minutes, I have established a fact that maybe the low has been established on this already continuous uptrend. I am interested to establish a long position. Okay, So this is just that simple. But first, you have to identify where is the trend right now. Now, of course, uh, being a trader, if you hold an a intraday position or a few days position, you have to be realistic. Like what I say, if I, I go for 15 minutes, maybe my uh, first uh, profit target may be just about 12 points to 20 points. Uh, if it comes, I'll just realize it. Okay. Now, so um, just a recap that we focus on a buying opportunity because first of all, it's an uptrend. Generally, it's a macro uptrend. So therefore, this is a micro uptrend that we should be targeting for but before that we are waiting for the retracement for a reversal up pattern so we make a case that we decided to make a purchase with a measured risk and we go for this micro uptrend now so what are the advantage of buying on the uptrend what is what are the advantages of of buying onto an uptrend is this okay now managing through the trend now what's the advantage of buying on a radial uptrend is this um let's say for example i enter here i took profit okay maybe about 12 to 20 points now then i'm mindful i am mindful that the trend is uh, still a general macro uptrend that, that means the trend is still good it's still moving up and say i'm intraday trading or i'm a position trading i've taken my profit uh i just i have no plan to hold for a long position and the next day or the next few days, if I'm available to trade the US market, I sat down here in my trading room right now at home. Uh, I will continue to be very focused to look out for a buying opportunity. Why? Because the general trend is up. So therefore, I'll be continuing to look out for a retracement. And if this happen again with strong weighting hammer or reverse up pattern, I will go through the same motion, um, point of entry, have a measured risk and target for uh, a, a market dynamic or uh, whatever dynamic dynamic that is, uh, I will just take profit accordingly. But now the key is this. Now, if you trade on already existing uptrend, now the key is this, the beauty about what are the advantages on buying an uptrend is this. Now I could buy and take profit the next day, maybe, or next week, I buy and take profit. Why? Because the trend is up. But if you can flow or, or you can uh, or you can plan accordingly that in the existing trend, you may buy and sell, or you may buy and hold, or you could buy and sell partial. And you could, because if you sell partial, knowing that it's still uptrend, you could hold the rest of your position until the uptrend is uh, fully realized. Okay, now this is how it works. Like what I say, I'm just uh, at this point in time, I'm just sharing with you the structure. Now, the next thing I'm going to move on into is to share with you how to uh, uh, activate that in the uh, actual chart itself, okay, in the actual market. Now, then the next question you may ask me is that so, Con, how, how can we tell uh, how to tell if the market is an uptrend? Okay, so uh, that's not my topic tonight, how to identify uptrend or downtrend. Uh, maybe what I could offer you later is uh, uh, a moving average. Now, there's uh, many reasons how we can identify trend. Either you could consider the fundamental, okay? Like for example, the US stocks, it seems like the fundamental is a little bit shaky right now. Uh, maybe the last two years or three years when Donald Trump is in, uh, uh, as a president, he say he want to cut the tax rate. Uh, the fundamental, I just felt that it's good because he say going to cut massive tax. Uh, so you're going to price in, I believe that the US stock market is going to go up. So um, so it could be fundamental. Okay. 
uh, or it could be just purely technical, that how we identify uh, the, whether the train is, trend is up. You could use trend line, or you can combine both. Okay, I use all of this fundamental, or I can, I can use solely fundamental, I can use solely technical, or I can combine the both together, fundamental and technical. Okay, but in tonight's demonstration, I'm just going to use purely technical to identify an uptrend. All right, um, let's go to the case study. And I, I hope that what I've explained to you, you have a good grasp of it, okay? Now, the next one will be, um, these are the four points where during part one, we discuss about it, okay? So again, if you can go back to the part one to do a, a tutorial, to do a recap, to understand how to uh, identify those market reversal with uh, high weighting, okay? Now, so these are the four points on this few days, this 26th of August, uh, maybe this is 27 or 28 August, I can't remember. Okay, these are the four points and I just named them as point one, point two, point three, point four. Now, if you still remember what is a, a micro uptrend and the macro uptrend, okay? Now, uh, we shall explain. Now, so what are the point one, point two, and point three is stated here? Point one, point two, Point three, point four. Let me just go back to the uh, earlier the chart again, okay, for you to appreciate. And you may have realized that the range of this hammer is much wider compared to uh, the previous previous periods. Okay, so is for this. So is one. The range is much wider compared to its previous period. So this hammer is it carries weighting. Okay. Now let's go back to the latest chart here. Now, so this is our point one, point two, point three, point four. Now earlier I say that how to identify trend. Um, there's a lot of method how to identify trend. Uh, if you don't have one, you may want to consider this 200 days or 200 period moving average. Now, uh, identified trend you could use purely fundamental just to repeat, or you could use purely technical, or you could combine both together. Now, I'm not recommending that you can only use this 200 days moving average. You can explore um, how you want to, how, how you're going to identify an uptrend uh, with any other methods. Okay, if it works for you, how to identify, identify an uptrend, it works for you. Now, in this demonstration, I'm going to use a very classic way of identifying an uptrend. Now, this is called a 200 period moving average. Okay, so basically how to apply a moving average is this. If you feel that the general price is staying above the 200 period moving average, so technically uh, it's an uptrend. Like for example, during this period, it stay kind of below the 200 moving average, it is downtrend. So once it cross above, it is uptrend. Okay, now um, at this point, I may contribute Contradict, contradict myself, you say, hey, con help, but this is below 200 days moving average, and why do you make a purchase? Now, I didn't say that you can't buy in a downtrend, okay? I just say that you try to focus as much as you could when there's an uptrend, you try to stay on course to find the best opportunity to buy. Now, exactly because during this period is below the moving average, I saw an opportunity I enter position, I keep it really short. I have no intent to hold uh, uh, for too long, okay? Now, so it's below moving average that every swing, every swing, my objective is to maybe clock about 12 to uh, perhaps 20 points. If it reach my target, I'll just cash out and that's it, yeah? But I, I don't really like this kind of uh, uh, short-term trade uh, too regularly because it keep me too busy. Okay, I, I I prefer to be something more productive. Okay, but once in a while, if I'm free, I will still go for a short term trade. Now, now notice is this. Uh, next slide. Now, because it's under the 200 days moving average, so I cannot conclude there is an uptrend already. So therefore, I do a really short term trade. Uh, if I get hold about 12 to about 20 points, I will just get take a profit. Now for Number two, the number two point two entry, it is the same as well. Okay, now, so that's 
uh, I would just go for the micro trend. If you could see that I stated here as a micro trend, I would not go for the macro trend because I could not establish a fact that the trend is up. Okay. Now, as it progressed, point three became very interesting. I will have a choice. Okay. I will have a choice to maybe if let's say point number three is my first initial entry, I may have a choice to go for a quick one. So this is about still about 20 points, if you could see that, or I may consider the right through because it is above the 200 period moving average. Now see how I plan that. And point number four, when I make an entry is still well above the 200 period moving average. So I recognize that perhaps we are in the uptrend already. So as of point three or point four or N three and four, once I get into the market, I may consider not just go for the micro uptrend, but I may also consider to ride through the whole trend. And this became the big chunk of the profit. Okay, This will keep me active, keep me a little bit busy, keep me alert, but this will keep me um, <laughs> will keep me really sweet and uh, I will have sweet dreams. Yeah. So, um, and of course, as it moves along the timeline, uh, once it crosses below the 200 period moving average, there where I realized that maybe the trend is looking a bit tired, you can have, you can always have a choice that you may want to do an exit strategy for all your position. Okay, so now I'm just going to leave uh, the next maybe 10 minutes for Q&A. Uh, I hope that you're still staying with me and I hope that you enjoy what uh, my delivery so far. Um, okay, let me just move on to the next slides. Okay, now before I take on the Q&A, I just want to let you know that uh, I, I, I've, I've been through this CME group education. It's really fantastic. Uh, if you find that my presentation is pretty awesome, and do check out their website and the video that I have. I think it's really good. And, and personally, I'm also learning to uh, understand more a bit about soft commodities because I felt that maybe it's a way to go in the near future. Soft com, uh, maybe the major trend is about to come. I do not know. But uh, before it comes, I better study about soft com. So just, just go and understand. It's all this uh, uh, free of charge. Uh, cmegroup.com slash education. And of course, throughout uh, within this uh, page, earlier the page, you could do a search. It will bring you to the uh, micro e-mini futures if you want to understand more about um, uh, how, what's the whole mechanism of the contract. You can go to the uh, education page and learn more about the micro e-mini futures. Okay, next. Um, we're going to take on some uh, Q&A. But before that, if you find that what I share with you is uh, really useful, you want to get hold of the slides or the handout. Uh, what you could do is that QR code here is there. Uh, just uh, send in your request that you want to have the slides. Uh, maybe you can do it within the next 24 hours. So I know it is from you. I will send, I will send this stack of slides to you and please, please revise it. Um, I'm sure that you'll find that after tonight's session, the way you look at market, it will be different. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to take on some q and A. I hope that there uh, is or are already question coming in. And this time, I, um, I'm not too sure. I'm, I'm just enjoying myself for the last, I do not know, 40 minutes. Um, I hope that Sri is still listening in. Um, is yes, there any I question? Have, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. We do have uh, some questions on, on hand. Uh, if you have any other questions, please feel free to type them in the question box, and we'll go through them shortly. Uh, first up is a question from Mr. Dinesh. Dinesh is asking, uh, in, from one of your earlier slides, actually, first few slides, what is 0 0.25 equals to $1.25 in USD? Okay. Now, um, I always like to use this example. Uh, for example, if you uh, buy a car, uh, before you buy a car, you, you will know the specification. Uh, that maybe I have a family of a few kids, uh, four kids, in fact. So for me to buy a car, I will hunt for... Uh, definitely a 60 city car okay so that's my specification so if i go to toyota showroom i will say I want, i'm only going to go for six city car um maybe uh, i like hybrid car so i'm going to go for six city i go to toyota showroom and that's my specification that i give it to my dealer so same thing when you trade any contract there's always a contract specification now the contract specification states that for micro e-mini smp 
for micro e-mini S&P, the minimum movement is 0 0.25. Minimum movement is 0 0.25. Say, for example, it means that now the micro e mini SP may be 3,000.00. It means that the minimum movement that you will jump up or down is 300.25. The next jump up will be 300.50. That's the minimum movement is 0 0.25. And each 0 0.25, it represents $1.25. Okay, so one full point, which is 1.00, I just want to equate into more simplicit, uh, simple form for you to understand. If 0 0.25 is 1.25, then one full point, 1 1.00, does it equate to five US dollars? So when you make a purchase uh, of micro e-mini S&P at 3,000, it represents 3,000 times five, it represents 15,000 US dollars. So uh, you can use that to, a, to hedge the market. Um, I know that's not the question here, but I, I just get very excited. How you hedge using the micro e mini S&P is this. Like for example, you're holding a basket of uh, very S&P related stocks. And say for the next one or two weeks, you're, you're just very fe feeling very uneasy. You felt that market may be coming down. But you, you're holding this precious stocks that you have. You're you are pretty sentimental over it. But however, you have this technical skill. Maybe you have followed me for the last two, two segments. So you build up this confidence. You have the technical skill. But how you're going to hedge is that you could sell the micro e-mini S&P while still holding on to your stocks, US stocks. That's how you hedge. Yeah. OK, uh, maybe can I take on the next question? All right, the next question is from Mr. Peter Lai. Is there any possibility of a retracement displaying for a hammer? I don't quite understand the question. Uh, Sri, can you decode the question on your end? Um, or maybe can I'm you read thinking, the question to me again? <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, is there any possibility of a retracement to display a hammer? Would you see a hammer pattern if there's a retracement? Um, All right, while you think about that one, yeah, while you think about that one, Peter Lai, if you're still online, please uh, maybe give us more details, uh, more juice to uh, for us to better address your okay, question. I, I'll try to answer, it, answer this question. I think, uh, let me just recap. Uh, how to apply this successfully on my part two, and maybe I combine with part one because I did give uh, some uh, brief introduction about part one, is that uh, I think, first of all, my my content tonight is that uh, as a trader or investor, but tonight topic is about trading. Uh, first of all, we have to identify where the trend is. Okay, If the trend is an uptrend, then your focus is, that means you do not jump into any trade too loosely or too quickly. Uh, the market may be still moving up, but you, you just let it appreciate. But knowing that it is a, we are in part of this uptrend, so what we should be looking out for is let the market come down. As the market come down, this is what I call retracement. Okay. Now, as it retrace down, uh, whatever time frame you are looking at, look out for meaningful hammer. Look out for meaningful market reversal. So this is my point here. So it is... Uh, you have to wait for the re retracement to come with a hammer. So that's the whole structure that I'm covering tonight. Yeah. Okay, Sri, do you have uh, the next question? Yes. Is it advisable to hold overnight position for futures trading? It's a very interesting question for you, Mr. Conha. Oh, yes. Um, I have uh, spoken to the CME group uh, uh, friend there. Uh, before I came on board to be uh, one of their trainer. So again, I'm, I'm really honored to be a uh, representing CME group to be a trainer. So um, how I said to impress them, and in fact, this is what I'm doing here is that uh, now trader profiling is so important. Um, now, let me just give you two part of uh, uh, as a trader profiling. Tonight, I won't talk about the longer term profiling. Now, on the short term profiling is this. Um, there's two part in profiling. Now, the first one, I will call it as intraday trader. So I think this, the term speak for itself that when I say as an intraday trader, that means you get in today and before the market close, you have to exit your, your position because I have no idea 
what the next day will be. But there's another uh, profiling that I personally classify at, uh, it as short-term trader. Now, short-term trader, the profiling means that the holding period is two, year, uh, two days to maybe three months. Two days to three months. Then you may ask me, why is it up to three months? Because the reason is very simple, is that I may have a view for overnight because, because the trend that I just mentioned, the 200 period moving average is already indicated to me that is already in an uptrend. So therefore, I have established a position based on what we discussed on part one and part two tonight. Now, I may ask you the next question is that, now since I got into a position on this uptrend, potential uptrend, now I'm gonna ask you this question and all of you can answer is this. And uh, who is the one that written to me on this question? I think it's a fabulous question. Uh, can I have his name? Sure, you can. It's uh, Mr. Yi Wa Chong. Okay, Mr. Yi. Now, if you have entered this position because you see that it's a 200 uh, period moving average, you have entered tonight. You prepare to hold it as a position. Now, my question to you, Mr. Yi, is this. How long do you think that this uptrend will carry you to? How long? How long? And your answer will be, I do not know, Kong Hao. Yeah, neither. I, I do not know as well. Now, can you imagine that if it's going to be a perpetually uptrend because it keeps on staying above the 200 period moving average, it may take weeks, then I'll allow it my position to hold for weeks. If it's going to take one or two months, I'll allow this position to hold for one to two months. So uh, the question is this, uh, the answer is this, that we do not know how long you stretch. So it really depends on the market itself. And why I kept it at three months, for a very simple reason, because uh, if I'm going to trade futures, now most of the futures contract, they have expiry date, and it's always in the quarterly contract. Most of the futures contract is in, in a quarterly contract. We have the June contract, we have the March contract, we have the September contract, December contract. So currently I'm tra trading the December contract. It means that somewhere along December, it's going to expire. So uh, therefore I kept it at about three months. Uh, so that's my, uh, so again, to recap, um, whether to do intraday or uh, position, it really depends on you at the starting point. You have to make a choice if this trade is going to be for intraday because you have no idea for a position or is it going to be a position. So you have to make the choice first before you even trigger the trade. So once you have this, uh, what I call the trading's prof uh, traders profiling of you know exactly what you're going to do with this trade, then it becomes much easier okay so with that i think uh, our time is up uh, maybe i hope that a small question you can continue to send the question as usual Stri will consolidate all this question and email to you email to me and i will take some time to reply and uh, they will just uh, email back to all of you okay now um i just want to stay connected with you um uh, you could like my facebook page um i, I love to read a lot uh, about fundamental, about technical. So uh, I, I read daily, I post out on my Facebook daily. So I will, I will uh, highlight um, some important things about what I read. Okay, so it, it kind of like became a newspaper to you. Okay, so if you want to follow me on my Facebook, you can like uh, Konhao, K-O-N-H-O-W. You can like it. So whenever I post out news or potential turnaround or, or on my blog, you will be able to receive it as well. Uh, next, you can go to my website, waypeter.com. There's a lot of resources here. And if not, uh, and, and of course, you can also always go to cmegroup.com slash education. Okay, that's my um, IG account. And lastly, if you have any questions uh, pertaining to what I've discussed tonight, uh, feel free to drop me an email, konhao at waypeter.com. I'll be most happy to reply you, okay? So uh, last of all, of all, I just want to thank you, uh, Philip Futures, uh, Stri, for uh, hold, hosting this program. And also I want to thank you, uh, Miss Rachel Wong, that's listening in too. Uh, she's the head of Retail uh, Asia from CME Group. So I want to thank you that you give me this opportunity to be part of this uh, education program. So thank you so much and thank you all for listening in tonight. All right, thank you so much, Kon Hao, for the insightful live webinar. Please keep your questions coming in to, and thank you for being a wonderful audience. We will uh, package them and send them to Konhao like uh, he shared earlier. 
and uh, he will address them uh, as he when he finds uh, time available for himself in the coming days. Meanwhile, we will do look out for our follow-up email that we'll send you along with the link to this recorded webinar. And once again, thank you for being a wonderful audience. Have a wonderful week ahead. <laughs> Goodbye.